brutally murdered. Now, it's not only the murder, it's what happens after the brutal killing. They dismember their bodies. Uh, the, uh, uh, even a family, a family kin of mine, a relation to me, okay, mm -hmm. uh, 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 he was not only shot, but he was divided into three pieces and his core was sent to his wife. Three pieces. Three of my friends were also murdered. What I'm trying to tell you is what's happening today is in Syria, similar to what has happened in Iraq, when brutal groups will attack Sunni groups, Sunni mosques, and Shia mosques, mm -hmm. so that they will incite civil war in Iraq. So who this are these armed gangs that they materialized well all They are well known. We have yeah. published their names, their photographs. These are the leaders of what you love to call the leaders of Syrian democracy I'd and love freedom. To see this. Uh, uh, yeah. Here are they. The first one is the Islamic Emir of Hamas. Mm -hmm. the, the third one is, the, is uh, the, the leader of the freedom and democracy movement in Syria. Ayman al-Zawahiri, uh, the leader of Al-Qaeda, three, three days ago, gave a speech in, he, in which he emphasized two things. He was bragging about September 11, and he was asking the Mujahideen of the Islamic world to go and join their Syrian Mujahideen brothers to fight against so the Syrian regime. Saying you are saying that what's happening in Syria is some fundamentalist, Islamist, extremist, armed movement that is trying to destabilize if the If you country. are talking about the armed groups, absolutely. Yeah. If you are talking about peaceful protesters, as of day one, and let me repeat this, and I will continue repeating this till the Western media reaches a tipping point that it starts understanding this. We do believe that their demands are legitimate and we are addressing their demands in a comprehensive way. Here is my challenge to those guys who are criticizing us. Mm -hmm. Syria is implementing right now, as we speak, unprecedented political reforms. By the time, I, I, I believe by February next year, uh, uh, the, the, the political scene in Syria will be unparalleled across the Arab world. And here is a challenge to the United States of America. Go to your friends that you usually mm -hmm. offer them military protection and you build military bases in their lands and, and ask them to follow the good example that we are going to challenge the rest of the Arab world oh, with. One of, you, one of the things you said in a radio interview a few days ago is that it, not a single demonstration in Syria has started from anywhere other than a mosque. It, now, I was in mean. Syria in June, as yes. you know, and that's not true. It is there were true. demonstrations at Damascus University. It's absolutely untrue. In Aleppo University, no. there were demonstrations. A Sky News team filmed a demonstration in Aleppo that started nowhere near a mosque. It's untrue. Everybody knows. Why would everyone be lying? No, it's they are not lying about look, Syria. Look, 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 I don't look, understand. Look. This is the, let, let us let us be respectful and reasonable. Okay. Everybody knows. Everybody inside Syria and outside Syria that religious groups have started those demonstrations from mosques. Every Friday, it is the day in which people fear for their lives in Syria. Even the clergymen in Syria are saying, are saying publicly, are condemning the fact that fanatics have changed some of the mosques, not every mosque. Not every mosque in Syria did witness a demonstration. It's, I would say, out of the eight, uh, uh, three or 4,000 mosques in Syria, 70 or 80 mosques were the epicenter of those demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want to say is, is the following. If people are really, and this is the overwhelming majority of the Syrian people, are really about political reforms, about a multi-party system, about transparent, free, democratic elections, mm -hmm. this is the way ahead for Syria. If they are about their, their ideology of extremism paper with, and brutality, with, names with their and names, pictures. Google them. They are all, they are all on, on the web. Listen, they don't hide themselves, by the way. No, and I, will, and I will, but I can tell you about people I've met in person. I mean, I don't need to look at, the, at, at this. I can tell you I've met demonstrators uh, that uh, have protested, that are so afraid for their own safety because they say they're wanted by security forces that they're now in hiding. Others who say, you can interview me, but you need to blur out my face because my friend was taken into custody and no. tortured. No. So are you saying if that you these are, people are all no, fantasizing no, What I am saying is the following. Mm -hmm. If you are in opposition in Syria and you are about political opposition, about opposing every policy of the Syrian government, mm -hmm. you are okay, you are welcome. The new laws in Syria would allow you to form your own political party. The new media law is the most liberal law today in the whole Arab world. Mm -hmm. This is... I, I, I am not denying it. This is new. It was not the case before. But this is the new reality in Syria. We have announced uh, town hall meetings, town hall style meetings across Syria for a national dialogue mm -hmm. that is being attended by the opposition. And the sort of things they are saying is something that has I have never ever heard before inside Syria. I'm telling you how the reality is changing and how the context is changing. 
we are having a new election law and we are having a new uh, mm -hmm. a, 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 a new part we the new party law has already been issued next february we are having a multi-party democratic transparent election let the representatives of the syrian people who will be elected mm -hmm. let them decide what they want for syria not those who hide their faces and tell you stories they may hide their faces because like gayat matar you heard of his story a young 26 year old who was in hiding who was eventually taken into custody and then his body was then recovered by his family. Look, I told After you this, been in I'm repeating it. For a week. Terrible atrocities, unknown in the history of Syria, a very civilized country, have, have, have been committed in the last six months. It, this is similar to what has happened in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, why on hell would the Syrian security abduct a person, kill him, and then give his body dismembered and, and uh, eviscerated to his family and tell well, them we did it. Human but rights groups would say that's to careful. intimidate Those others. Who, Is no, that not absolutely. happening Why would we want to intimidate peaceful protesters when we are telling them, we are telling them, uh, the C new Syrian laws allow for peaceful demonstrations. We, you are allowed to have your political parties. You can express your oppos opposition opinions on Syrian TV or everywhere so you this want. young man and was you killed to elections and you believe we go and kill him yeah so Just you're saying this young man was not killed no. by security this forces, man was killed by groups that want to further tarnish the image of the Syrian government because they believe this is their historically unprecedented opportunity mm, mm -hmm. to attack the Syrian regime and topple it for reasons that are well known to almost everybody. So you're saying there are no instances in Syria over the last six what? months where activists or democ dem democracy protesters have been killed by security. What I am saying is Syria has appointed a judicial commission and they are, they are publicized across Syria. Every single family, every single person that has a, a complaint or that has been mistreated, or that has lost a dear one, should go there, and there is a commitment from President Assad that they, these incidents will be fully investigated. However, the question to you is, so you're who, saying who will yes hold or no accountable to those criminals who are committing yeah. atrocities across Syria, including killing children and, and women? But are you saying yes or no to the question, have security forces killed demonstrators and activists what in I the am streets? Saying, what I am saying is very months. clear. The, the government of Syria does not approve of this, and we, everyone who has, who has uh, wrongfully committed a crime will be held accountable. The challenge is not those guys, because those guys can be brought to court. The mm -hmm. challenge is how can we address those fanatic Islamic groups, the same groups that are, are, are bragging about September 11 and are calling the Mujahideen of the Islamic world to come to Syria. Imad Mustafa there with the narrative from the Syrian government from the beginning. You saw him give me a folder, by the way. I have it here with me with photographs of people he says are in charge of fomenting the dissent, uh, these fundamental Islamists, but pro-democracy activists, including those I've spoken to in Syria, including those who've fled Syria and are now abroad, tell me that is absolutely untrue. It's not something I witnessed either among those who I uh, spoke to inside of Syria. Uh, there was no uh, uh, extreme uh, fundamentalist demonstrations starting from mosques, not the ones I was able to witness and not the demonstrators and activists I was able to speak to inside of the country. And by the way, we never got an answer as to why or not, why Syria, uh, CNN was not allowed back into Syria. We got that week-long visa in June, but since have not been able to go back in, especially to those flashpoint cities, Hama and Homs, even inside of Syria, we were not allowed to go 